I tried salmon. I had eight ounces of salmon one night and I feel clear, mentally clear. I can focus, like I feel connected. I can articulate myself. I can communicate. Then they take a bite of meat, which is loaded with calories and loaded with fat and they get some of this fat back and they feel great. And oh my God, veganism killed me. Veganism didn't kill you. Your bad diet killed you. It's, it's just so, I don't know, blatantly obvious to me. Hey, this is Ryan of Happy Healthy Vegan. So it seems like it was just minutes after we published our last video about Ravana quitting vegan that you guys in the comments were letting us know that, hey, Elise from Raw Alignment just published her own video how she too has quit being vegan. And you know, this really doesn't come as any surprise whatsoever because as I pointed out in the Ravana video, I'm starting to see a very clear pattern amongst many of these former recent vegans as I like to call them a pattern of just extreme fringe ways of eating and dieting that have nothing at all to do with being vegan. Remember, being vegan is an ethical and moral stance. And, you know, all this fasting and, like, being a long-term raw foodist, as, you know, the name raw alignment implies. And there's more to it, as Elise says. Switched back to cooked vegan food. I tried high-carb, low-fat, low-fat, high-carb, like, juice fasting, water fasting, like all the things. Well, it sounds like he tried pretty much everything except the one diet that pretty much all the vegan doctors promote, the diet that Angie and I promote here, a simple whole food plant-based diet, just being a regular vegan. And one of your commenters here calls you out on this. There have been comments and messages floating around the interweb <laughs> that I am a liar, that I'm lying to myself, that I'm lying to you. Uh, and I just want to clear that up because I literally have not said ever that I am vegan at a point that I was not vegan. Okay, fair enough. I get what you're saying there, but let me speculate why your viewers might be upset. It's because you've been withholding a major truth about yourself and the way you've been eating for quite a while now. It's been around two and a half, almost three months now that I have been not vegan anymore, <laughs> that I've been consuming meat and fish and eggs. Well, that is kind of a big deal, a raw or vegan person who has been secretly or just not telling their viewers about eating animal products for three months. You can see why a few of your viewers might be a little upset with you, but I'm not here to criticize you for that. I just want to point that out to you. But let's move on to why she had to quit being vegan. And as she describes here, when she was living on the rainy side of Hawaii, she developed some respiratory issues after inhaling mold there. Migraine headaches, chronic sinus congestion, essentially I like could not breathe out of my nose at all brain fog memory loss uh, appetite loss extreme appetite loss inability to articulate myself and communicate properly so after enduring with those symptoms while living in Hawaii she left for a more arid dry climate so I moved from Hawaii to Colorado which is where I am now and within a couple of days my sinuses and my like head pressure and face pressure and congestion was less intense. Basically right after that I dove into a vegan mold diet and supplement protocol which also improved the way that I was feeling quite quickly. I would say within a couple of weeks my congestion was so much less. So let's take stock in what she said there. After removing herself from the mold damp environment that caused her symptoms, most of her symptoms went away in just a matter of a couple of days, no effort. And then after doing a mold vegan diet, I'm not sure what that is, but anyway, more of her symptoms went away after a couple of weeks. And after a few more months of being away from Hawaii, most all of her symptoms disappeared. So I just want to highlight how pretty much all her symptoms went away once she got away from Hawaii. However, she said she had one lingering issue. But eight months into this protocol, I felt way, way, way better, but I still felt like my brain was just like off. Like it wasn't functioning properly. I all right, so she says there's some kind of lingering brain fog. We'll get to that in a second. Anyway, she says in the story now, she goes back to Hawaii, and lo and behold, her symptoms return. But within 15 to 20 minutes of walking into my friend's house on the rainy side of the island where mold has been present, like, vis visibly, um, I was out, like, 
all of my symptoms came back full force. So here's now where I don't really understand her reasoning. She says she returns back home to Colorado with these symptoms that she got in Hawaii. And instead of doing what she did the previous time from going Hawaii to Colorado, like just waiting a couple days, the symptoms go away and doing this mold vegan diet, more symptoms go away in a few weeks. Instead of trying that, she decides to take a new approach. But I decided to try something for one week. And so going back to all of the things that I was learning about brain health, um, and just listening to my intuitive pull of like salmon was just like the thing that I was appealed to that appealed to me your intuitive pull that salmon was the thing for you like how does one intuit that I mean just sounds like you're googling some articles on you know brain health and some paleo pro meat articles about salmon came up rather than ones that had information about vegan brain health anyway let's see what happened I tried salmon I had eight ounces of salmon one night and I this was just like a couple nights after getting back from Hawaii so I was still like I had all my symptoms going on and I woke up the next morning with zero congestion and zero brain fog zero migraine zero lack of clarity so on your previous trip from Hawaii to Colorado, when you didn't have any salmon, your congestion cleared up in a matter of days and weeks. And on this trip, after a day or two being back, you're feeling bad, you eat some salmon and your congestion goes away the next day. Well, that's exactly what happened on your previous trip. So you can't say that salmon caused that while well, you're saying it helped with your brain fog. And let's explore a little bit more about her, her views on brain health is that salmon is extremely high in omega-3s, but more specifically EPA and DHA. And these are essential for brain functioning and for yeah, everything brain related. And there are sources of omega-3 obviously on a plant-based diet, but the difference is, is that they are ALA, Wrong, there are vegan plant sources of EPA and DHA. We'll get to that in a second. They're made up of ALA, which can be converted to EPA and DHA, but only a very, very small percentage is actually converted. So it's not very efficient. It's something like one or two or 3% can be converted to EPA and DHA, which are what power your brain. This reminds me a lot of what Nick Akato was saying a few years back when he was saying that his vegan diet was deficient in omega-3s and shrinking his brain and a lot like Elise didn't have any blood tests or any doctor visits, just intuited this. <laughs> just go vegan, I gotta go vegan, I go vegan. No! Do you know how bad that is for the brain? You might be thin, but your, head, your, your brain is shrinking. Well, let's see if Elise and Nick Akato are right, that vegans are unable or super inefficient at converting ALA into DHA and EPA. And let's look at a video I made back in 2017 covering this very point. It's been known that people that eat no fish, no meat, ones that are just eating, you know, plants or leafy greens or their flax seeds or walnuts, get in their short chain omega-3s, have the ability to convert some of that into the long chain, but it's been thought that we really can't convert that much. Well, in 2010, a research team in the United Kingdom um, did a study on over 14,000 people, and it confirmed suspicions that the human body can indeed make much more EPA and DHA from our ALA and plant foods than ever thought before. In fact, the researchers found less differences than expected in the EPA DHA levels in people's blood, despite large differences in how much omega-3s they were intaking. For example, the difference in omega-3 intake between the fish eaters and the non-fish eaters was up to 80% more. However, when you compared the blood serum levels for omega-3 fatty acids, particularly the long chains, it was just a couple percentage points difference, pretty much the same results. So if you happen to be one of these vegans who's considering not being vegan anymore so they can get their long chain fatty acids. Well, this study shows you don't need to do that. You're getting a lot more than you might think. It seems like the body becomes more efficient at converting ALA into the long chain. At least that's what the researchers speculated. So it makes sense looking back now that 
potentially I was extremely deficient in these even though I was eating a high fat vegan diet for literally a year before I shifted to going back to eating meat and animal products I just I wasn't getting that conversion that I needed to in order to power my brain and to heal my brain well she never mentioned having gone to a doctor so she can't really claim that she was deficient in anything you just cannot intuit that you're deficient in anything it's just not how it works anyway let's get back to her belief that it's pretty much impossible for her to get her epa and dha as a vegan because as dr gregor shows in this nutritionfacts.org video that there are at least two completely vegan plant-based sources of it i recommend Everyone needs a plant-based diet along with contaminant-free EPA and DHA to get the best of both worlds, omega-3 levels associated with brain preservation while minimizing exposure to toxic pollutants. So in case you didn't catch that, there are both yeast and algae-derived long-chain omega-3s, which means you can be completely vegan and not have to worry about your ALA converting over. You can go straight to the long-chain omega-3s as a vegan. So. Here's where I have some issue with what Elise is saying, because first of all, she's given incorrect information. There are sources of omega-3, obviously, on a plant-based diet, but the difference is, is that they are ALA. But what's worse is someone who was claiming to be a vegan at the time before eating the salmon, I don't see why the vegan didn't seek out the vegan alternatives, the algae-based omega-3s. That would be perfectly fine and, and, and adequate and healthy. Instead, she sought out to eat salmon. What kind of vegan goes for salmon or any animal product before seeking out the vegan alternatives, which are equally as good? In fact, as I'll show you here, the vegan alternatives are even better. Fish has the preformed DHA and EPA, but on the other hand, our oceans have become so polluted that fish may contain various pollutants, including dioxins, PCBs, pesticides like DDT, flame retardant chemicals, and heavy metals, including mercury, lead, and cadmium, that can negatively affect human health. Indeed, the Scripps Institution of Oceanography study finds that toxic pollutants are found in fish across all the world's oceans. Now, 2017, I don't understand why anyone is eating fish, if they truly want to be healthy. As the authors of the study indicated, persistent organic pollutants can be found in any species of fish anywhere in the world. In fact, comparing today's fish to the fish of what your parents ate at their age, we're getting about 50% more of these pollutants. This reminds me a lot of Ravana's situation when her vegan medical doctor gave her a cure for SIBO, which was to eat a vegan diet plus take antibiotics for about four to six weeks. Instead, Ravana said, no, I'm just going to eat the vegan diet, not take antibiotics, and hope for the best. And of course, nothing improved. And instead, she went for eating animal products rather than taking antibiotics and remaining fully vegan. And I also find it quite ironic how most of these former recent vegans gravitate towards salmon as their first animal product back, when salmon is possibly the biggest source of dietary pollutants. Talk about purity. I also want to note that I'm not supporting factory farming. Everything that I have been consuming is grass-fed, wild-caught, pasture-raised, organic, and locally sourced when possible. Well, that was a quick slippery slope from eating salmon to fix your brain fog to now eating cows, grass-fed cows. Yeah, you have to point that out. It's all local and grass-fed and organic and all that. You're just trying to whitewash it. I mean, anyone knows that no matter how you try to portray how well these animals are cared for, they're still slaughtered. So anyway, leave your questions and comments down below. Were you at all surprised when you saw this announcement a couple days ago? And what do you think about her connection to, say, Ravana and Tim Sheaf? Let me know your thoughts down there. So until next time, guys, let's stay vegan and remember it doesn't suck being vegan